Hey, what's up everybody? So just recently, Vision Tech sent me some OCPC branded RAM and uh, asked me to take a look at it. Wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it yet, but during my initial testing of what on the surface appears to be pretty good RAM, even if it's a little spendy on their website due to some issues beyond their control, um, I actually had an issue with one of the value series dims not allowing my system to post. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to sort of talk with you guys about some troubleshooting steps that you can take in the event that you run into a no post issue and you suspect that your RAM may be at fault. So really the main tool you're going to want to have on hand for this is your motherboard manual. Never underestimate the value of these things. They make them the way they do for a reason, and by and large, a lot of the postcodes that you'll be dealing with assuming your motherboard has a postcode reader, will be listed in here. The reason I knew that this was a RAM issue when I started my testing was because I received postcode 50 on my postcode reader, which according to the manual is a memory initialization failure. Now as a point of full disclosure, I am using an, an X470 RS Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a very feature-rich motherboard on the X470 platform, and I bought it because of all of the additional Diag and troubleshooting features that it has surface mounted on it. But in the event your motherboard doesn't have something like a postcode reader or even uh, LED indicator lights to show which point of posting operations your motherboard is on like this one does, you should still be able to use a little case speaker, either supplied with your motherboard or more typically with the case that you purchased for your system. There should be four headers on your motherboard that the, that the, the speaker will plug into. And while you don't need to keep this connected all the time, for the purposes of diagnosing, those beeps that the speaker will let out when you're trying to post and there's a problem can be helpful when trying to diagnose a problem, whether you're reaching out to uh, a forum community that you're a part of or if you're reaching out directly to your motherboard vendor to see if maybe they can help you troubleshoot what's going on. Now, if you wanna try going at this yourself, which I do highly recommend because it helps in diagnosing to know what steps the end user has already taken, and honestly, a lot of these steps are gonna be recommendations that you're given anyway, the very first thing that I personally do is clear CMOS. Clearing CMOS will basically set your BIOS settings back to an OEM or factory stock configuration. Every now and then, uh, even with new motherboards, your BIOS may just be doing something a little funky and maybe your RAM just didn't agree with it at first. Clearing CMOS can oftentimes allow your RAM to at least post at its sort of baseline operating speeds, which for DDR4 is 2133 megahertz. From there, you can go back into the BIOS typically and then try reapplying your XMP profile and see if things will work from there. Now, after you clear CMOS, you do, of course, as mentioned, want to reboot your computer. And all of the steps that I'll be talking about here, you will want to reboot your computer after each step to make sure that you have fixed the problem. Because if just moving from one step straight to the next, if you're not trying to turn on the computer, obviously you're not gonna know whether or not the problem's really been fixed. So, let's say clearing CMOS didn't do the trick for you. With anything that you're diagnosing, be it a computer, a car, hell, a toaster, start with minimally invasive procedures and move to more invasive stuff. Depending on your motherboard, this may differ. Like for my Gaming 7 Wi-Fi here, for me to clear CMOS, all I have to do is hit a button on the back of the I.O. for this motherboard. It's really convenient and really nice to have. But in the event your motherboard doesn't have such a button, there should be a couple of pins on your motherboard that are labeled CLR underscore CMOS. Just take a small flathead screwdriver, touch the pins together for three to five seconds, that should clear CMOS and get you rolling. Anyway, if clear CMOS didn't work for you, the next step I personally would take is just to reseat your RAM where it's sitting right now. Sometimes the pins just straight up don't want to connect right the first time. Either there was a little bit of excess material on, uh, on some of the contacts for the RAM, or maybe uh, the, the little spring-loaded prongs that are on the inside of your DRAM modules uh, just weren't wanting to budge initially. So sometimes just unseating and reseating your RAM is all that will be needed in order to correct your problem. Again, at this point, try rebooting your computer and seeing if that works for you. If that doesn't work, the next step is gonna be significantly more time consuming, but not necessarily a huge deal. 
Basically, it involves testing each of your individual dims one at a time across every single one of your dim slots and attempting to reboot your computer to see if the problem is either related to one of the dims that you got or if the problem is related to your dim slots. Admittedly, that can be a little bit tricky to determine since sometimes your motherboard can have dead dim slots. Sometimes all four of them will be dead. Very rarely though. But again, the, the problems can sort of mimic one another. So this is the best way to go about eliminating your RAM at least as a possible concern. And remember, since we're talking about least invasive to most invasive, Messing with your RAM modules is probably one of the easiest things you can do on your computer when you're trying to diagnose no post issues. So again, you're going to take one stick at a time with none of your other sticks installed and rotate it through all of your DIMM slots and attempting to post your system. If it posts in the first slot, great, awesome. We now know the DIMM is good. We also know the DIMM slot is good continue along all of your dim slots with that stick. Sometimes it could even be that a specific dim slot for whatever reason just is not on talking basis with that particular RAM stick and you may just not be able to use it there. But repeat this process until you've gone through every single stick of RAM that you have. If you're finding that none of the slots will post with any of your RAM modules, try issuing an RMA for the RAM because it's unlikely but still possible that you just got a defective kit of RAM. These things happen. I've had it happen with Corsair DIMMs, I've had it happen with G-Skill, I've had it happen with Crucial. OCPC, just being a lesser known brand name, is that, that, that has nothing to do with why these sticks failed. I mean, hell, they all run Samsung B-Die. Anyway, say you get back in your RMA'd sticks of RAM. Say you're still having the problem and you've gone through all of your diagnosing steps previously, see if there's someone that you know that has a known good working kit of DDR4 RAM that you can test on the motherboard to see if you can get posting at all with any kit of RAM. It is extremely unlikely that you got two faulty kits of RAM in a row from the same vendor, but it is still possible, and testing with known good kits of RAM can eliminate the possibility of it being a RAM concern and more a motherboard concern. Of course, that's going to be a video for another time, but these diagnosing and troubleshooting steps can help ease your concerns and the time it takes for you with diagnosing a RAM-related issue for your motherboard. Now, as it turns out, my specific issue was relegated to this specific 8 gigabyte stick of the OCPC value RAM that they were sent to me. So I am getting these RMA'd, and more than likely, this will wind up resolving the problem for me because all of the other sticks that I was sent work great. And actually, the extreme performance OCPC sticks that I got are actually performing on par with my G-Skill Rip Jaws 5 at cast latency 15, which considering the looser timings of the OCPC dims is Pretty impressive, all things considered. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I just wanna put it out there. I am certain there are a couple of additional steps that could be taken here or there, depending on the nature of what it is you're encountering. And sometimes it may not even be readily apparent that it's a RAM issue. I mean, sometimes your motherboard LEDs may be indicating that it's a, that it's a CPU problem or that it's a VGA issue, when in fact it could be your memory manifesting as those problems. Or it could be a completely unrelated component causing these same issues. Sometimes diagnosing just takes a while to figure things out. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful and hopefully it will ease some of those tensions when moving forward when trying to diagnose issues like that. But before I go, leave some comments down below. What did you guys think of the video? Are there any additional tips and tricks that you found work in the past for any similar issues that you have? Also, what would you like to see me do with this OCPC RAM? Because I've gotten it in, I did some preliminary testing with it, it seems like it performs pretty well, but I don't necessarily have a dedicated use case for it all right now. So let me know down below what kind of testing you would like to see, be it gaming or productivity or whatever. Anyway, give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Get subscribed for more content coming at you once every other week at a minimum. Also, be sure to follow me on social media. I am on Twitter and Instagram, at The Manic Geek. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time. So take it easy.